humble hearts of light. I am Uriel. I come to you tonight in the name of cosmic ministration and cosmic service. I come to you tonight to make you aware of the purposes of the infinite Father of Love and how you may engage your energies in that solar, that cosmic activity calculated to bring a telling effect to humanity awaiting the blessing of your outer service. I am Uriel, and my heart is charged with a chalice of infinite fire-like radiance from the very heart of God. I come to you bearing these blessings as garments to be worn by you in cosmic service. Will you say unto yourself, O oh, beloved God Presence, beloved Archangel Uriel, and all the Archangels, I offer myself tonight and forever in the service of the light of God that never fails, for I perceive that in the world of form, humanity have themselves aborted many of the plans of infinite delight. Therefore, humanity has been deprived of these plans simply because they have not understood the radiance and the intent, the purposes of Almighty God. Will you who are sleeping tonight then, in consciousness, determine that you will awaken for the moment that you decide that you are going to awaken your own God presence, taking up this fiat of reality for you, will bring that delight of heart into your own being that will cause you to awaken to the living word. This word, this precious word, is itself endowed with immortal life. Do you recall how long ago that blessed one of light, Jesus of Nazareth, spake unto humanity and said, Know ye not that I bring unto you the words of eternal life? Later, the disciples said, Lord, thou hast the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? Will you understand then the sweet gesture of simple ministration and service, the opportunity to be a servant of God as a light ray moving between mankind and conveying a portion of that holy essence which your own God presence is. Let me tell you something, beloved ones. I know how many of you stood at the portals of birth pleading for entrance into the physical world. Do you know why you pleaded for entrance into the physical world? Because in your hearts and souls you knew that there you would find the opportunity upon a shadowed planet originally endowed with magnificent light, the drama that itself caused the cosmic curtain to open and reveal to the eyes of men in the realm of nature, the wondrous workings of God. Now let us draw back the curtain upon the workings of God from the standpoint of spiritual drama, the drama of the soul. Your souls have longed for millenniums and aeons, for reunion with the heart of God. Do you know that, beloved ones, you yourself often do not know what the feelings in your heart really mean. You cannot easily translate the hieroglyphs of heaven into those cosmic intentions that are the intentions of God. Well then, let us assist you tonight by calling forth from the ancient memory of God the radiance of the sacred fire with which he vested you one and all, 
Let us call forth from the great mind of God the very thought that gave you individual birth. Now then, as the thought matrix is brought to us for each one of you, let me say that I am also requesting of the cosmic lords the descent of the thought matrix of your own individualized self to be raised above your head ten feet. That throughout this service and the service of beloved Omega from the central sun, there may descend gradually to all who are able to receive it the spiritual matrix from the heart of the living God of yourself. Can I give you this night any greater gift? How the flame of life within you will leap. How the flame of life will rejoice that you will design in your own consciousness a consciousness that will welcome the descent of your own perfect matrix of light. Do you see what this will mean? to your individual self. It is made for you. It is that matrix from whence you stepped forth in the beginning and said, Lo, I am. This is the matrix of God's own consciousness. Why do I say this so many times? Because I know in my own heart of fire that the minds of many of the students who are embodied in physical form, may find it difficult to accept or assimilate the very concept that the matrix of God, made especially for your own individualized manifestation, is so close to you. I want you to understand that after the descent of Adam and Eve from the higher consciousness in Eden, symbolic of you all, that you had to ratify that descent into form consciousness, also into the deceit, the serpentine lie that robbed mankind of his birthright, else death could not have been passed upon all men. So many have been puzzled by this. They have thought that they themselves did not in any way do anything whatsoever to ratify the consciousness of destruction and passing into the realm of the psychic momentarily in some cases and to lose their physical life, their body tabernacle. They have said, we are not guilty. Yet the cosmic law has said, this must come unto you. So humanity should understand that death itself is a breaking of the wicked covenants men have made with evil conditions that are not like unto God and that perfect matrix presently so close to your hearts. Do you see then that somewhere, sometime, someplace, you had to ratify the conduct of Adam and Eve and be driven yourself from the consciousness of Eden? Now you can understand the saying, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Ere the evening end, tremendous and magnificent accomplishments will be made known to you, and you will see clearer than you have ever seen before the opportunity you have to actually receive the resurrection flame, the flame of vibrant life, once again being born within your soul. It is like the sounding of a distant ocean echoes from a far off shore. It is the intent of the Father, glittering, jewel-like, radiant perfection, beaming into consciousness, streaming into the hearts of men. The question may be asked, can all mankind have this matrix that you are sending to us tonight, beloved Uriel. For there are others in my family 
whom I would like to have wear it. Oh yes, beloved ones, the matrix can be worn by all, for it is God's love that brings it into the world tonight. It is God's love that disseminates it among humanity. Let the heart of men hunger for it, and now it becomes more readily available for volunteer angels of ministration have agreed that wherever the heart hunger of humanity for the heights of heaven reaches our octave from your planet, we will answer on the instant and bring that blessed matrix of the perfection of their God presence right over them, just as we have brought it over you. Do you understand? O oh, beloved ones, ministration is a magnificent outpouring. There are so many who love to think and take delight in the archangels of power, the archangels of faith, the archangels of protection. Oh yes, when I used the plural form, I was speaking of other systems of worlds also. I know that you love Archangel Michael, and you also dearly love Archangel Jophiel, Chamuel, and even my humble self. For we are all your servants, and the purpose of our office is to serve humanity. We do not feel that we deign to stoop to serve. We do not feel that we deign to stoop to serve to come into your midst. We do not feel that we, who have often stood behind the door in other ages, are performing any activity that is not the will of God. It is the will of God that we step forth from behind the veil in the sense that we bring these perfect matrices once again into conscious awareness of embodied humanity. I tell you, the world has far too long suffered beneath the psychic thraldom of the senses. Too long have humanity remained unaware of the magnificent patterns God has in store for them. Now in this day, when the prominence of evil has belched forth as from the pit, spewing upon mankind the hot sparks of inflammation and hatred, I desire in the name of God to replace this by the radiant coolants of the heavens themselves. I desire to bring those coals from the altar that burn not, that instead cool the passion fires in the soul and restore to man his rightful dominion and power that God himself gave him originally over his own life. When you take dominion over your own life, beloved ones, as God himself intended, then you see cosmic beings may walk the earth through you. Oh yes, I know, some of you may feel literally ensouled by various angels, by various higher beings, and will feel the tremendous radiance that we bring, sealing you in a heart that sings of the purposes of life. How glorious is this, to sing of the horse and the rider that we have thrown into the sea. For Egyptian bondage and the sting of black magic and the sense of sin that the world has so long borne, the sense of magic that is so clearly portrayed in the mourning of the magicians should be understood by humanity that they may know and see clearly that man does not need that form of magic that works ill to his brother, but only that which will perfect his own inner nature until he draws those wondrous designs of his presence very close around himself and then begins the beautiful task of at last outpicturing in the field of humanity the activities of the living Christ. Then you see how comfortably beloved Jesus and others of the sacred fire can return and physically walk among you. Why, beloved ones, 
they will be in their own native habitat. But presently, humanity are not ready to receive them because the consciousness has not yet changed. The consciousness remains wedded to afflicted conditions and diabolical are the plots laid for mankind to trap them in snares of delusion. There is one magnificent concept embodied in this release that I want you to particularly grasp, and that is this one, that the divine matrix is your rightful claim upon perfection, that this was made for you by God himself, fashioned by artisans of the spirit under divine direction, and you alone may wear it. It is like a tailor-made suit or dress. It is especially fitted to the very environs of your cosmic being. If at first it seem a bit uncomfortable to wear, know that in reality it is not. For lo, as Jesus has said, I am with you always, so are the angels of ministration and service. Always with you, receding sometimes to a distance because your vibratory flow is not comfortable to our actual being. I want you to understand that we return almost on the instant with complete forgiveness to your heart the moment you will change the vibratory action of human discord to divine radiance. How beautiful are the divine feelings present here tonight. Why is this so? because it is a touch of reality, the reality of heaven, the reality of our sphere of cosmic magnificence. We, then, who have patiently waited for centuries, even as the Eternal Father has patiently waited for aeons, beckon you homeward, and we beckon all humanity to fulfill their lot for this planet Earth, beloved Terra, that at last the whole earth may come home into a magnificent golden age experience where every brother and every sister understand the meaning of the golden rule. Why, do you know, when I knew that I was coming here this evening, I had a large ruler, seven feet long, created in the etheric realms, and I have brought it with me, and I have it directly above my head, and on it it says the sacred words, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It was from this ancient tome of the cosmic brotherhood that beloved Jesus drew forth in his great cosmic ministration and service the very words that indicated to humanity that they should fulfill this great law of divine love. When this becomes fulfilled in the hearts of men, then the outer actions will swiftly follow. But so long as individuals make it a matter of the heavy activity of the law and the thundering as of from Horeb, they may, beloved ones, in some fear and trepidation of the wrath of God, not truly understand the love and therefore fail themselves to interpret it to their fellow men. Love is a magnificent gift. Accompanied by service, it becomes the completion of the perfect cosmic white fire cube that builds the city four square. For the city four square, in reality, is a fourth dimensional manifestation of that cosmic golden rule among men, so that when it becomes a manifestation there and people begin to actually have it in the physical world, then it becomes very easy for us to actually build the city of God among men, for they are already in complete agreement with it. Do you know, tonight I want you to understand a certain condition in the consciousness of men that is very, very important to each of you. Let there be, for example, in this room, or in the next one, or even in an entire city, a whole city of devotees that love God and are most willing to be obedient unto Him and the golden rule. 
and bring one person into that group that has in their consciousness the design of disobedience and the entire city becomes tainted by it and affected by it. So powerful is this force of the mind in man that even one discordant note can affect the entire orchestration. Now I know at first that with your ordinary human sense of justice, you may say to me, Beloved Archangel Uriel, how can this be? Are you telling us that the world itself could be completely devoted to the laws of God and that one laggard soul could pollute the whole? Yes, beloved ones, I am. And do you know why? You have that saying in your world of form that one bad apple spoils the whole barrel. Well, it stems from this great cosmic truth which I am releasing tonight. And it shows you why it is necessary and has been necessary in the past to sometimes separate individuals through the change called death and take them to other planetary bodies or other places or even into the change called the second death which occurs upon the planet Sirius before the high tribunal. Do you understand why this is necessary? Because if purification is ever to be a warning in the world order, it must be by some enforcement of divine design. I am certain that in the annals of this world, many fathers have found it necessary to take their sons or daughters, so to speak, to what you call the woodshed. Let me make clear to you then that the Heavenly Father also chastens those whom he loves so much and sometimes creates specific planetary bodies called prison houses, where these souls who disobey him continually are watched over by angels that have a certain service to render to those specific souls. No, they are not always easy, and they do not always manifest that type of love that is the type of love that some people envision as divine love. Sometimes they are very stern and create dramatic pictures before these individuals who can clearly see them and say to them, this is an example of what will happen to you if you are disobedient. I think that you should understand that simple adulthood or physical maturity does not assure spiritual maturity. And individuals sometimes are very naughty boys and girls that need to have the discipline of spiritual mentors whom God has ordained to actually hold sway upon these prison house planets. Now I am aware that some of you may seem a bit disturbed by this fact, but I want to make clear to you that there are many strange conditions in the universe that are not always rightly understood by humanity. Would you rather see these souls pass through the change of the second death or given some opportunity when they continually disobey God. Do you see how this law works? Well, beloved ones, be not afraid, for I know that obedience is the key to every divine grace and gift, and obedience to the golden rule is the cosmic assurance of infinite happiness to every individual upon this planet, and also the golden rule brings into manifestation the city of God and the eventual crown bestowed upon all of the people who remain upon this planetary body and hold with its evolution in divine grace and divine order. This is why I am speaking so frankly to you tonight, to bring you into some awareness of the fact that in the universe there are undreamed conditions to the ordinary man or woman. I am sure that some Christians might desire almost to exercise me if they decided that I was reported to have said just what I have said. But, beloved hearts of light, it happens to be a cosmic truth, and if you will advance far enough in your ability to penetrate the universe, you will be able to see it for yourself and understand why it exists. Well then, beloved ones, how about getting on with the business of perfecting this planet? Why should we dally in our onward course of progress when humanity are waiting so hungrily for cosmic truth? 
They do not always know it. It is true. For many of you did not know the truth I have just uttered. And there are so many more that I definitely do not feel the need to further shock you this evening. And so, beloved ones, in our ministration and service, we are going to bring to your consciousness the great gift of allowing your divine perfect matrix, if you will accept it, to descend just a little closer to your physical form. And I am so hopeful tonight that even before the night is over, during beloved Omega's address, in honor of her, you will absorb completely your own divine plan fulfilled and will understand the mission that all of you have to wear the crown of cosmic reality upon your brow, to be crowned with holy wisdom now, to understand the fruit I bear and wear, a cosmic service in the air that men the golden rule pursue and bring God's peace to all, including first the few and then the many and eventually all upon the planetary body. For God has said, let all who are athirst come. And surely the candle, flame, the little flame of life that mankind wear will one day burn down until there is no more tallow in the candle and the wick will sputter out. Let them understand then that their blessed assurance is in the hopes of heaven to rekindle that cosmic matrix of divine reality is to receive a chalice of immortality. It is to receive and have the elixir of life right within your grasp, right within your hand, right where you are. Do you understand the meaning of this? I want to grow very firm, for I tell you, there is no higher goal than this I set before you, your own divine matrix. God has prepared a place for you, and do you know what this matrix is? It is the ticket to your own cosmic mansion. In my Father's house are many mansions. This is your cosmic deed to your own cosmic tabernacle. It will help you to understand the divine purpose of your being. It will help you to fulfill the reason for your life. And how blessed is your life. Blessed by God. Blessed by archangels. Blessed by cosmic beings. Blessed by the tiny elementals that provide you the food you eat. The fruit of the earth. How sweet then is the gift of life God has given to you. How sweet are the passions of his purposes. How sweet are all who glory in his design. For when you first came forth, how clearly, how clearly do I see that pearly sea of his consciousness. As mother of pearl swirling with white fire, I clearly see the purity of his purpose. In the shape of a heart, I clearly see the purity of his purpose. From that heart of cosmic, pearly, white fire, came forth the holy design of your presence. Then the gift I brought to you is also the gift of your own God presence. Do you understand the spirit of rejoicing in the heart of your presence in the very prospect of you at last receiving it into your own world and being a part of that precious gift? Is any gift higher has anyone ever made a higher gift? Can anyone? Do you know, I'm very happy tonight to know that in reality the gift is from your presence, even though I carried it to you in consciousness. It is really the bestowal of your own ideation and brings to you the flame of your own God reality, your divine reality, Bask in its light. O oh, mankind, do not spurn this gift. Do not turn it away. Do not think it is the figment of the messenger's imagination. 
or for one moment suppose that there is any error in the concept. It comes from God, and you simply can prove it to yourself by watching the effect of it upon your world. After you have heard Omega's dictation, you will understand it even more than you understand it now. As I take my leave of you, may I leave with you my love and my devotion, and may I make clear to you that the motion of your divine presence is cosmic progress, a mark of authority. You are the authority for your own world. You can take cosmic dominion over the world. You can tremble the very ethers of cosmic purpose by your God determination to be all that God wants you to be, to understand all the fruit of the free, to understand what Saint Germain means when he speaks of the flame of freedom. Open then wide the portals of your heart's door. Open then wide and close them nevermore. For lo, I am Uriel, the archangel of cosmic ministration, in the name of God, proffering to you the greatest gift that eternity can bring from its holy bosom, the radiance of the mother of pearl, swirling radiance of the perfect matrix of God for each of you, so beautifully wrapped and so purely preserved, never has it been altered by human thought or feeling. While your outer world has been involved in episode after episode of human affairs, this matrix has never been tainted. It has never been touched. It remains inviolate. It has been guarded by the archangels before Eden. And it is the beginning of humanity's awakening to a golden age fountain of cosmic victory for the planet Earth and for all humanity. Let us sweep then humanity in God's name into a pocket of cosmic love from which they cannot escape let us enclose them round about by such fires of creation that they themselves will return to the heart of God and receive his love for the prodigal son. Returned at last to the heart of the Father, all mankind made one in cosmic beauty. We will begin the song of the anthem of the free. And mankind will know the arts of war no more. They will beat their swords into pruning hooks. And truly, humanity will know the arts of peace. And the world and the world industry shall be involved in the service of ministration. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Victory to the soul.
sheep, hear my voice, for I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. How tender and beautiful is the gesture of hope that God has brought to every man through his own holy Christ self and those higher dimensions of the Spirit that are unafraid but deem themselves vehicles of expression of the infinite unto humanity. As I gaze today upon mankind, I feel those same feelings that stirred within my heart so long ago. I feel the same longing to bring the lambs that are astray back to the fold. I feel the same desires to gather those who will be fishers of men in this day when so much instruction in righteousness is the requirement of the hour. Hear my words and understand that the hierarchy sends forth the call and the call is for the healing of the nations. The fruit of the tree of life must be dispensed, and men and women must answer my beckoning to go ye into all the world and preach the good news unto every creature. For our love is still the same as long ago. It is transcendent, infired with cosmic power and strength. Our love has grown larger through the years. It has not diminished. And our hope on behalf of humanity is for the healing of mankind. You have heard it said, Let that which is lame be not turned out of the way, but rather let it be healed. And so I come forth this day imploring the Father of all to send legions of his healing angels into the world domain, to the hearts of little children, to those who are aged in outer consciousness and form, to all mankind to once again renew their faith in our presence. And I say, O oh, angels of healing, let thy light be brought to the earth as a beacon of cosmic hope to many hearts. Men can today have faith that the miracle power of Almighty God is moving in divers and strange ways his wonders to perform. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the nations, to heal the brokenhearted, and to make all to understand the meaning of infinite love. I come then this day with this call ringing upon my lips, to the angels of healing who respond to bear the flame from the heart of the Father, to each afflicted part, but in reality it is the whole body that is afflicted. It is not just the part that manifests the problem. It is the entire man that needs to be made whole. And so, as we come today, our consciousness is imbued with the strength of healing and the angels bear healing in their wings and they come in floods 
and they come as a river of God, a river of God that flows as though out of Eden into the consciousness of the world thought to heal the world, to restore the sight to blinded eyes, to open the continents of the air to the hearing and to heal the tongues that cannot speak. We come today to restore the spiritual gifts to humanity, to teach the new and living way through our flesh, which was broken for the purposes of renewing the strength of humanity, long-suffering, in the night of self-induced misery. The Tower of Siloam fell as a karmic hammer upon some, but they were not sinners. Above all those that dwelt at Jerusalem, I said then and I say it today, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. For immortality is the natural fruit of cosmic grace. And immortality abides within. In order for men to understand the transmittal of the oil from its own chalice to the wick and then to the flame, let them understand that immortality is the burning and smoking lamp showed of old unto Abraham. Let them understand that that burning and smoking lamp is within them. In some it has sputtered and gone out even before the cry, Behold the bridegroom coming. Let us make known then to one and to all the strength of our desiring which is to heal and to vivify in man the divine image, to tenderly portray to his consciousness the awareness of our strength, the awareness of our intent, the fire of our purpose. We come today to recreate within the soul those tracings that are the restoring of cosmic boundaries, from the very heart and domain of God. Fear not, little ones, as I have said before. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. As of old, when the light of the Holy Spirit flowed over the hill country, reaching the hearts of men in their cosmic heights, so once again I say, let the flame flow. Let the consciousness of the light of the Holy Spirit be intensified in the world domain and let the cosmic teachers bear the responsibility of declaring the living word as the living waters lap the souls of men. You have offered yourselves in our service and we have received you. But see that you come to our sanctuary with clean hands and a clean heart and a clean mind. For thus shall thy offering be most acceptable. Know ye not, O ye of little faith, that the flowers have more faith to reproduce after their kind than some human beings do who do not understand that they came forth from God and that to Him they will return. Let their hearts then not be troubled by outer circumstances, but let them understand the virtue of our appearing, for the Christ consciousness will appear within you as a sign of the renewing of the Holy Spirit. You will mount up as on wings of eagles, you will fly into the blue and the golden sun 
of cosmic illumination shall cause your hearts not to faint. For you will remember the words of old that spoke clearly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Do you understand that these words are still the anointing of the heart as it applies itself unto God? I have something that I wish to direct to all of you. It is this, the way that you can please God is to believe that you can follow in my regeneration. You can place your feet in the hollow of the footprints I have left. You can accept the mantle of the prophet of God. You can understand the need to go in my name into the world domain. You can understand the fiat to heal the sick, to raise the dead to perform those works which I performed. You can understand that I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. You can mount in consciousness to those cosmic heights that will bring you into the fourth field of your consciousness, the faith we drew in performing our mission. And I tell you, as the lilies of the valley grow and speak of tiny bells of purity and hope, as the rose unfolds her petals and wafts her fragrance everywhere, so can you become a living immortal of God. Cleansing your consciousness now and determining that you will walk in the footsteps I have walked, that you will love God as I have loved Him, that you will reveal Him as I revealed Him, that you will understand that to you is given the mantle of the responsibility of teaching and speaking and glorifying God. You are here. I have come to the earth again through you. And as you draw me very close to your heart, the world will see that the power of healing and virtue to a poor humanity, naked and unclothed, unkind and without understanding, is being supplied with the light of understanding that they may be clothed, that the hungry may be fed, that the bread that came down from heaven may be broken. The renewal of the light in the world of form is our hope. Broken though the institutions be that bear my name, Though they have forgotten me and denied me before men upon earth, I must deny them also before my Father which is in heaven. But by a like token, I will affirm your presence. I will affirm your offering. I will accept you if you will accept me and the mantle of my responsibility to humanity in this age. Go ye then into the world and teach them the light that I am, the light that you are. For we have one Father, and he has sent us forth. Spirit sparks arise. Fear not, O little ones. 
My light is as close as it ever was. Closer still, for many more, bear the mantle of my will. Go ye then into the world and do your Father's will, that many come home in this age, that many understand, that many love. So shall we renew the strength of the kingdom upon the planetary body. So shall we restore the ages of hope to the little children's door. Once again they shall see once again they shall hear the anthem of the free. Go thou and do likewise. For truly I am with you always, even unto the end of this age. Peace be unto you always, in the name of the living God.
gentle hearts of love, may I speak to you of the miracle of the joy bells in the chalice of the heart. May I reminisce and speak of the ancient city in Italy, of Assisi, and the joy bells of the church that rang out in the morning when the dew was upon the grass and humanity, one and many, were making their way to church to worship in the simplicity of an earlier civilization when the affairs of mankind were not so complicated. There was the simple meal, the breaking of bread. There was the simple ritual of dressing oneself in easier garments to be worn. There was the flowing together of people in the marketplaces and the simple greeting and the understanding of basic joy between the hearts of people. Conditions in the world today are not as in days of yore. The blue skies shine with the golden light, but the hearts tremble not with the miracle of the bells. O oh, gentle miracle, miracle of the bells of joy, of sun-drenched earth and the birds of the air, congregating as in a cathedral of holy prayer. How beautiful are thy feet upon the mountain, O each minister of love and light who understands the greeting of the early rising sun, a fire of hope that at last a new day is born, and with its birth Opportunity occurs in the crucible of man's heart. The matrixes of his mind become inflamed with purpose. And so he goeth about the simple task of gathering together the fibers of his soul, combing them even as a weaver does comb the flax. Do you understand then that as I speak to you today it is to bring to mankind the simplicity of the radiance of nature, the simplicity of the hearts whose chords are mellow, whose strings respond to the ministration of angels, whose feeling world is a light with the joy inflamed at each new day and each opportunity to caress the day with those gentle feelings that are a part of the divine life, the divine sky, the divine earth, the divine waters, all of these controlled by the hand of God are perceived as present also within the physical form of man. I am Kathumi, known of yore as St. Francis of Assisi by many who have so named me, but I feel myself as one wedded still to poverty of being, giving all unto God, that he may give all unto me, that I may also give all unto thee, and this is the joy we seek, the spirit of universal givingness that cleanses the soul from accretion and the vain desire to accumulate objects, as our Lord so long ago did tenderly say. A man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And so today we who are the brothers who greeted 
Helena Blavatsky, long ago in our tent in India, are also those brothers who have offered their life unto the Most High in order to awaken in man and quicken in man a realization of the mystical body of Christ. O humanity, scattered abroad and scattering, O humanity, trampling upon holy things and the objects that ought to be thy objects of affection, will ye not gather yourself together in consecration to a holy effort in this day to understand the things of the Spirit, the things which God has made. These are beautiful still, filled with the passion of His holy will, the infinite reality of God trickling down and dispensed to mankind because they have learned the fragrance of love. How beautiful is love! What compassion is born out of its strength, bringing hearts together in the tenderness of a floral bouquet offered spiritually daily unto God, the fruit of consecration. O holy consecration, thou art not afraid to give thyself away even if thou knowest that in the giving thereof thou wouldst never receive anything in return, thou wouldst still give thyself away. There is no grasping in this love, no seeking to preserve itself, but only the buoyancy of the spirit of givingness, the joy, the tender joy of man's reality in the joy of Jesus the beautiful Lord and Master of Galilee, who long ago consecrated himself to the preservation in humanity of those ideals now so futilely trampled upon by mankind. For in this age of destructivity, in this age of forgetfulness, the divine memory is not awakened and the old painful thorns of human creation continue to rest upon the brow of a distraught and bleeding humanity. How they cry out in soul, and the little children uttering their prayers still in various parts of the world catch passing glimpses of radiant angel faces in their dreams caressed by the sweet intent of God, which humanity have so turned against in this age of confusion, in this age of struggle, humanity have forgotten how to love. And so tonight I have been asked by the hierarchy of light to step forth here in the radiance of your gathering and to offer my humble service on behalf of Mother Sky of Mother Earth, of the sweet air, vibrant with the light of cosmic intent, and speaking still to the hearts whose consciousness, like a twig bent by the hand of God, caresses still within the memory of his love in other years and other times, descending from above, creating the potential of holy climes to manifest among humanity a radiant humility, a tender affinity for light and love. Men still seek and yearn to know those mysteries of the spirit that are not ours alone to bestow, but are the gift of the caress of thy holy Christ self. O radiant light, how marvelous is thy coming to mankind. And though there be some a scorning thy coming, there are some to whom thy light is a borning new concepts of a new day when once again the devotees of the Spirit shall hear the chant of the masters of wisdom 
as in their sacred temples, as in the sacred temple halls, they congregate and come together in the old ritual, reminiscent of the days of ancient Gregorian chants, yet now not Gregorian in nature, but a chant of hearts and minds to whom the sacred fire weaves the garment of intense desire for the way of the angels, the way of cosmic beings and beings of light is still the flame lit within the minds and flamed by the passion of other years and other delights when known unto God their fears were less apparent. Now I come, and I come with purpose, and the purpose within me is to beckon as one of the brothers of light unto humanity, to awaken to the light of reality ever present in the human soul. O oh, gentle soul, like the kernel of a mighty oak, a little acorn, speaking unto hearts of God's delight in thee. Will you see the high hill upon which God would plant thee, a place of tender abode, a dwelling place where the cultures of the world, garnered together by angel hands, will recreate a dream so volatile in other lands, in other times, in other ages, but now seeming to descend into a gross conception of iron and steel and wheel, the turning of man's desires from God to the left-hand path of destructivity and cruelty. How couldst thou, O humanity, when the love of God, constant in its fashion, does exhort humanity to a new dawn of the divine realization within themselves. How couldst thou, O humanity, turn a deaf ear unto the call of thy Creator, his mouth pressed unto the very bosom of the earth, sweetly beckons to mankind of the cosmic milk that can be found there, a milk of divine kindness, an example of infinite purity, tenderly purchasing for man the bounties of the abundant life. Yes, the fashion of God's intent is also the fashion of the intent of the brotherhood called the Great White Brotherhood, the spiritual hierarchy, and the brothers who also wear the golden robe of cosmic illumination that come with me tonight. Do you not hear the rustle of their garments? They stand round about me. Over one thousand in number, they congregate here with you to bring you the golden flame of cosmic illumination, the Christ intent of the ages born and placed before you in the very cradle of your heart. How beautiful upon the mountain is the spiritual fountain, the fountain that saith unto man, Ho, all ye who are athirst, come and drink of the water of life freely. The brothers at Shigatsi send their love. The brothers of light and illumination send their flame of illumination to you. Will you make yourself worthy? Will you begin to understand how that the very plans of heaven are interwoven with our brotherhood? They are interwoven because the Most High God has given unto us by the hand of Christ the radiance of His intent. We are conveyors of the message of that intent to humanity whether it be in worded instruction as we give tonight or it be by the spirit of our thought most intense, most virtuous because God has made it so.
Will you understand that this whispering, gesture, in the heart, speaks to men, and saith unto them, Come ye, in the words of our Master, unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mankind should understand that the rest of the spirit is not of necessity a cessation from activities, but the beginning of a communion with the Most High that bringeth to the soul the fragrance of that holy moment when God first spake unto man and said, I am thy father. I bequeath unto thee my image. I gird thee round about with my strength. I place thee in Eden, the Eden of my love. And I bring here the confluence of the waters that they may gather themselves together. Take dominion over them, for they are also given unto thee that thou mayest master them and understand the mysteries of time and eternity. O holy chimes on our organ at Shigatsi, though I be not with you now, but in Colorado, let men understand the meaning of the true El Dorado of the Spirit. Let them understand the meaning of discovery, now as in days of yore. For their hearts still hunger for thy cry, and as a parched ground lappeth up the waters, so do their souls seek for thy gentle virtue. Thy power is in the wind, and thy power sings within their souls. O beauteous chimes, Ring out into the hearts of men. O chalices of freedom, once again let thy hearts ring and hear the sound. No mournful cry is this, but only the consummate communion of heaven with earth. The raising of the poor into the arms of the living God. Conferring upon them who are naked the garments of supreme loveliness, letting them wear in their hair the flowers of cosmic adoration, letting them feel within their souls the flames of tender devotion, teaching them the way of peace and the way of God. For peace and God are one, and the arts of war are arts of destruction. They have never been taught to humanity by the gods, by the ascended beings, by the angelic hosts. They come to rob from mother's hearts the tenderest fruit of her womb. And woman were made, all of them, for the purpose of bearing to the earth, garments of strength that sweet souls may inhabit, tabernacles in the wilderness of mankind to learn and to experience the Dharma of the law. O holy lands, wherever thou art, echo now thy burden unto men. O beloved Terra, O sweet Terra, how thou hast cried out to humanity at the shedding of blood. How thy soul, O sweet earth, has been covered with desecration. When the call of the masters of wisdom is clear and clarion, it rings out with the sun in the morning. It rings out with the setting sun at even. It also is to be found in the middle of the day, radiating the strength of its hope to mankind. I am Kathumi.
I have said long ago, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Now, again, I say, O God, may thy spirit tenderly invoke in myriad hearts the peace of Christ and of God. This is not to be found in the world clamor and clash. It cannot be found in the flutes of destruction, but only in those mellow flutes of hearts congregated together in a harmonic manifestation of sweet melody. O oh, melody of love, singing from the hearts of the nations, how God would gather thee together into an understanding of true oneness, not through the destruction of the icons of the world, but through the creation in the hearts of men of new icons of the spirit inhabited by living souls, making the body temple fashioned after the divine intent, a chalice of culture and beauty. Music then, descending as of yore, brings that communion of the angels bending low over brook and plain, over hearts once again, and making all to know the beauteous flow of the holy chalice called the grail that each man can utilize by surrounding his heart with garlands of hope and garlands of intent, and garlands of illumination. How beautiful upon the mountain are thy feet, O children of the Spirit. Mankind, will you hear it? Will you once again echo the refrain of infinite love in thyself? It is no strain upon thy energies, but only a consummate power, a fragrance to fill every hour with the new culture of the ages born trembling on the cup of life because men love it as God loves it. Take the little children by the hand. Lead them into domains of cosmic culture. Teach them the way of the Spirit. Let not their hearts be troubled by the misadventures of the carnal world, the harshness and the bitterness of life. This is no fountain of spiritual strength. It is a drenching with a black rain of negativity. Yet the gray ones come to the world, the gray-shadowed brothers with their hopelessness and their feeling of the need to control mankind. They need not to control mankind, and mankind need not to be controlled by them. Let freedom ring over the earth and a new song be sung, and let that song be in memory of our intent. Now some of you are asking me questions and I beg you in honor of my intent this evening and the intent of the hierarchy to bestow upon me the freedom to tear my own garments and to bring forth to you what is upon my heart. For I have often listened to the pleas of humanity and I have answered many questions for humanity. Give me the freedom then to speak as I must from my heart, that you may know and thus bestow upon others through the knowledge I shall bequeath to you the simplicity of the sweet and noble city of God referred to long ago by Augustine. Truly, if mankind understood the fragrance of the heart, they would understand that God still makes saints and that in making them today, 
they do not find that they are any more recognized than we were in our day as those who had chosen the way of the divine. Will you accept then this opportunity to cherish yourself? As I speak to you tonight, I urge upon each of you the cherishing of the God flame within your heart. Will you do this with me? Will you turn to the God flame within your heart and ask it to intensify in humility, in purity, and in love? Will you just ask it how it longs to be asked, the God flame to be invited once again by mortal men to expand its life? And as you ask the God flame, to expand, will you just know, each one of you, that the God flame will obey, for it is an obedient flame to the dominion of the will of man when called into action. Now that you have called the God flame into action, will you allow it to expand your own domain out into the universe until one flame touches the other without fear? Some amongst you have fears of dark forces, and truly they are in the world, and truly they proclaim certain threats to the peace of mind of individuals. But if you will understand that the living God is a holy fire, then the flame from his altar can embellish your desire to express his reality, do you see? And when you express his reality, the reality of God touching each other will not proclaim enmity, but only sweet friendship. So is the power of love, considered also the power of holy wisdom. And what of the people of China and of Russia and of other parts of the world dominated by mortal tyranny? Are they not people? Do they not have hearts? Do they not have flames within those hearts? Can we not create then such a flame of cosmic love that all of the nations of the world would ultimately feel no need for hostility but only for a culture of the spirit? Perhaps one day the peasant women of Russia will become leaders even in the political way of that nation and restore to the learned people of the universities the tender love and beauty that God originally implanted in all hearts. These are hopes of the hierarchy. For truly, we have many approaches to the stronghold of mankind's hearts. And the approaches we make sometimes evoke a natural response from humanity. And then again, we find rejection. But we are so willing to be used as instruments of God's peace that we proclaim the innocence of our intent and the innocence of the brotherhood's intent with the right hand of our strength. Yet I assure you that the karmic board definitely as measures they can take against those segments of humanity that insist upon bringing darkness and despair and tyranny into manifestation. We have many measures we can take, and truly these we do not wish to use. For what we wish to use is the instruments of love and peace, the instruments of harmony, these are enormously powerful. And so I have been asked by the goddess of liberty, the spokesman for the karmic board, that holy cosmic woman, in the name of the world mother, to proclaim during this respite in the dark cycle, when the penetration of the light beams from God's heart once again intensifies, that love, Divine love shall be our tactic 
to show love to humanity. And this love will not be the type of love that is actually walked upon. It will be a flaming love, a passionate devotion for God. It will be active in the world of form. It will go into the hearts of the universities of the land through the young people who will espouse our cause. It will speak in the stance they take for virtue and culture, for harmony and togetherness of spirit. It will proclaim identification, not in a violent measure, but in a strong measure of true wisdom of the spirit. Other ages have existed on this planetary body. Many of them are forgotten by the consciousness of man from an historical standpoint. But I tell you truly, the soul has not forgotten. And the yearning in the hearts of current humanity and much of the unrest that manifests violently in the world of form as one segment of life seeks to vilify another, to fix the blame upon this segment of society and that segment of society, in reality is the result of the beautiful light of God that never fails, the intense devotion of the heart of God for the heart of God through the heart of humanity, piercing sometimes as with thorns on the crown of humanity, this ray of infinite love in reality portrays new hope to the ages because the current unrests and those that have existed in the near past are also manifestations of the hidden hungers of the soul for our peace. Now it is true that we are capable of tremendous phenomena the phenomenon of stigmata, and of many other spiritual matters. But I do not think that these matters would of necessity bring mankind the freedom he desires, but only a feeding of idle curiosity. And so as I come to you tonight, it is to ask you to wear the mantle of Christ's peace upon your consciousness. Peace is stronger than war. Peace is not a negative quality. It is a quality of God. Peace is very dear to his heart. But we do not want that peace which crieth out peace and safety and then sudden destruction comes upon humanity. We want that peace that is itself spiritually militant that refuses the acceptance of error and human terror. We ask that hearts will ally themselves with one another in a gesture before Almighty God, calculated to bring down the light of the sun in new hope. Torches alight then upon the world will bear to humanity a new age. And the new age will be one of spiritual growth because man wills it so. But unless you hear me tonight and unless others hear the voice of the hierarchy, we fear that mankind will return to human slime and delusion. How clear, like the tones of a bell, are the thoughts of God proclaiming infinite freedom to each soul and tenderly enfolding all in a cape of ascended master love, protection against the winter's cold and the summer's heat, protection against the scolding of mankind and the trampling of their feet. These virtues go on and on, refreshing to the soul as is a new day when a well-rested soul arising from his bed once again seeks his goal. Do you understand the love of God? This love speaks to your hearts. This love is in your hearts. This love has made your hearts. And the tower thereof,
cannot resist the assault of the Divine One. As in the hound of heaven, the Eternal pursues mankind, not endlessly, but to a point that all may have that blessed opportunity of caressing His face and of seeing it. And the face of God will change man. For truly, those who see the face of God can no longer live as men do, but as God lives. For to behold His face is itself a rapture. For truly, His face is thy own, thy image. This will atone for all matters that are accumulative in the karmic realm. For born out of God's devotion for His creation is the motion of the response of His creation to Him. The beauty of creativity, creating bonds between hearts. Why will mankind continually turn against one another when in reality their strength is in their union, in the magnificent beauty of their sweethearts. I recall this Valentine's Day celebrated by so many in the world, how I thought to myself, humanity are really sweethearts of the Most High. And if you think about these words, the sweetening of bitterness in human consciousness, the inducing of fragrance where bad odors exist in the feeling world of mankind, the toxic conditions that produce illness and qualms in the mind, and nihilism, you will understand how we can embrace the fair winds of heaven. May I then invite here tonight 10,000 angels of the sacred fire. Can you stand the influx of these cosmic beings? Well then, let us do it, O brother wind. Bring from the four corners of the earth 10,000 angels to the world and send them out to stand upon Cheyenne Mountain and then upon all the high hills of the world that the world may know that with the coming of the sunrise a new glow will suffuse that rise and men will see that I am sacred word of the living God is a flame that burns away the barriers between souls and melts hearts into one beautiful devotion of His holy purpose, the ideation of the mind of God, the tenderness of His love the love of infinity, raising men from the sod and their finite hopes into those glorious domains of spiritual joy that is a communion cup of magnificence. Let the soul soar and commune with Him whom we adore. O living Christ, descend thy abundance today upon the souls of men, I pray, that they may understand the beauty surprise that comes from above the skies, the cosmic flow of angelic consciousness that radiates here below the intent of myriad angels singing once again as of old over Bethlehem's plain. But now they are so bold as once again to sing the old refrain of new hope unto those souls who once before heard in elder days the path of cosmic art, the pure design God wrought, 
This I bring to you. O Divine Ones, cast down thy outer conditions, all of them, and receive in this outer rude tabernacle the strewings of myriad flowers to abort thy confusions and bring thee once again the miracle bells that glowed, yes, I say they glowed so long ago in ancient towers. Let them sing to you for hours and hours a melody as cradled in the arms of God. Thy soul will kiss the living sod and say, I am a son of God.